I'm Devin Harrington, The Average Gen Xer. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, thanks so much for stopping by. And today is my dog Kubi's third birthday, so he wanted to let you know. Get down. Good boy. So, um, I really hope that you will subscribe, hit the notification bell, like, leave comments, all those good things. Uh, today it is cold in the ATX, so I'm kind of all bundled up. It's cold and gloomy and rainy. And my last video was the top 10 reasons why people choose to have children from my child-free perspective. I always feel like I have to qualify by saying that. And as promised, uh, this week's video looks at the other half of that original blog post, which was from the We Have Kids blog. I'll link the original article below. And so the other half is the top 10 reasons why people choose not to have kids. And once again, please remember, I am giving my child-free perspective on the reasons why people choose not to have kids these days and the opinions expressed here are mine alone. So let's get to it. I don't think these are in any particular order, um, but number one happens to be environmental impact. So from the original article on the We Have Kids blog, according to a study done by Lund University in Sweden, not having a kid can save an average of 58.6 tons of CO2 equivalent emissions per year, per year. That is a massive amount of CO2 and it easily outpaces other individual efforts to cut down on personal CO2 emissions. And this was something that I did not know. I mean, I don't know about anyone else who's child free, but I don't think most child free people would list the effect on the environment as their absolute top reason for not having kids. Just my opinion. Um, many child-free people see the world as overburdened with already 8 billion of us here and uh, myself included. I think the planet is overpopulated. I think we are just being irresponsible by continuing to breed and breed and breed and breed. At least it just seems that way. It seems like we just passed 7 billion and now we're at 8 billion. And it kind of makes me nervous. Anyway, many of us already view bringing more useless consumers into the world. Yeah. I did call babies useless consumers as the height of irresponsibility. And I couldn't agree more because in the words of our Lord and savior, Bill Hicks, humanity is just a virus with shoes. If side note, you have never heard of Bill Hicks, please do yourself a favor and look him up. He was a stand-up comic who was way, way ahead of his time, and he died tragically young of pancreatic cancer. So please do check old Bill out. Reason number two, people don't have children. The economic impact, or in plain English, it's way too fucking expensive to have kids these days. So here's a little story for you. I try to always tell stories from my life on this channel. I don't know if anyone gives a shit, but it's my channel. So I'll, I'll tell you all the stories I want. My grandpa, my mother's father was a carpenter by trade. He was of French Catholic descent and he was the youngest of 15 children. 15 children. Did his parents do nothing but have sex? My grandfather served in World War II, like most of the men of that age. He came home. 
He married his sweetheart, my grandma. They built a house across the street from the house that he grew up in, in Lawrence, Massachusetts, where I am from. And there, my grandparents raised six kids of their own, my mom being the oldest of those six kids. So they own their own house and my grandma stayed home with the kids on a carpenter's salary. My father served in the Navy during Vietnam and he came home and married my mom, his high school sweetheart. And they were in their early twenties and they had me right away. My mother got pregnant with me on her honeymoon in 1970. I'm 53 if you're trying to do the math. My dad got a job right out of the service. They bought a house, had me, and my mom stayed home with me for the first few years until they got a divorce, which is a whole other story. But they bought a house and my mother stayed home and didn't have to work. And that was on my 24 year old dad's entry level job salary. And these types of stories are fucking fairy tales in today's economy. You can't afford a one bedroom apartment in any state in the, in the US on one minimum wage job or even on one average wage job. So don't get me started on workers' rights. Anyway, if you're broke, why, why, why? Would you want to burden yourself with kids to make you more broke and more exhausted and more stretched thin? Why would you want to subject your own children to that struggle? And yes, I realize some people have kids so they can get free shit from the state, but we'll leave that conversation for another day. But this just kind of shows that so many people just have kids without even thinking about it because it's just what you do, what you're expected to do. Your parents want grandkids. Uh, you know, everybody in your family has kids and it doesn't matter how broke you are. There's just this expectation that either your God will provide or the state will provide, or you're just supposed to have kids. So somehow magically everything will work out. And it is the cause of so much misery and poverty and suffering. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox. Moving on. The number three reason why people choose not to have kids. Stress. <laughs> the stress of having one child can't be understated. And although it's the 21st century, it's very, very common still for the mom to be the default parent who does everything. I cannot tell you, I don't know why I'm surprised. I guess I say this, I didn't plan on saying this on this channel, but I find myself saying it almost every video about something is that I really can't believe that we can't have come this far to have only come this far that in the 21st century, it is still so common for the mom in a, a couple to be the default parent who does everything. And I say that because I read the regretful parents subreddit and, and other, you know, online content like it. And it seems like, you know, woman after woman after woman saying, I feel like I'm a single mother, except I'm married, you know, and my husband is one of my kids or whatever the situation may be. And so I just am really surprised and very saddened to learn that, that so many women are suckered into going through the stress of pregnancy alone and then the horrifying stress that can come from labor and delivery. Some women get lucky, but most don't. And it's all because for so many women on the Regretful Parents subreddit and other places, it's because their partner wants offspring. And then the woman is just expected to do the vast majority of the childcare because you're the mom. You're the nurturer. 
And so she's doing most of the child care, if not all of it. She's doing most of the housework, if not all of it. What is this, the fucking 1950s? And more often than not, she has to work full time too. I mean, who the fuck wants to sign up for this shit? So the number of men who want kids and then end up spending more time with their video game console than with the brats that they made is really kind of shocking to me. But I digress. If you have any doubts about the soul-sucking exhaustion that comes with raising kids, let's take a trip over to the Regretful Parents subreddit and read a post there. And this post is just called parenting is dot, dot, dot. And the flat, the flare, as it's called on this post is support only, no advice. Parenting is hell. I'm sitting here on our couch at nearly 3 a.m. pinging and unable to go back to sleep. I got to bed early tonight, 8 p.m. And immediately after putting our little ones down, to try and pay down some extra principal on this massive sleep debt. But my little ones have been manning the sentry post all night, ensuring the Sandman is kept beyond the outer perimeter. I've been up alternately consoling them seven times in as many hours. This is unsustainable. Amen, sister. Time for another round of sleep training. That's a 21st century term. I'm so sick of my life and the never ending grind of relentless responsibility. No autonomy, no personal liberty, entrenched in so much fatigue, you question everything and subsequently your judgment and response to everything. I swear to God, some days I can feel the neural pathways in my brain misfiring and rewiring real time. I'm a fundamentally different person after having kids and frequently not for the better. I'm angry more often than I ever expected to be. I took pride in my previous life on being measured, thoughtful, and calm, an empath in spite of my acute introversion. Now, I'm mostly just withdrawn. I channel all my energy into being a positive, presenting, functional, and happy parent for my kids. But I am left absolutely tapped and mostly hate the charade. What time I do have outside the hours I spend with them feels completely void and not because they're the only things giving my life meaning. Both my partner and I work full time. Both my partner and I work full time. Expenditures are through the roof between childcare costs, my partner's new job forcing a move, and a home purchase in the worst buyer's market in like 40 years. It feels like we are teetering on the edge. I fantasize daily about unaliving myself. Our life insurance policies just matured enough to trigger the unalivement clause, such that it's a qualifying event for a claim against the policy. Honestly, it is becoming a more attractive option with each passing day. At least then I can give my family immediate financial security. I just feel so beat down. We have no family or friends here as a support network and no time with which to form one. We are financially strapped, leveraged way beyond what I feel comfortable with. My partner has grown increasingly codependent as we both struggle with the demands of parenthood and I struggle to have any time of my own. I hate this, period. So much, period. Parenthood is hell. I feel like we should have a f moment of silence for this woman. And this is someone who they both work. They probably present a happy family to the world. And this is what's going on beneath the surface. 
how, how, how in anyone in this day and age would choose this is really beyond me. Now, obviously, I understand there are probably billions of people living in countries where women have no choice but to get married and have kids. So essentially, I'm speaking in terms of the free world, essentially. And I'm from the United States, so I can only speak to experience as an American woman. And I am eternally grateful to have been born into Generation X because we were essentially the first generation of American women who had a choice, who could just decide to go out and be career women. And, and we're not just automatically expected to get married and have kids. Um, at least that's my experience. So I, um, I, I don't know what to say about this post other than, um, I'm so glad that I was not forced to be an empty parenting machine like this. And I, I wish there was anything I could do uh, to be of help to someone like this. You know, I wish I had magic to just let her go back and make a different choice. Anyway, moving on from that happy little story. Uh, number four, the fourth reason why people choose not to have kids, unhappiness. And this is from the original article on the We Have Kids blog. The author says, while many people claim that having kids has made them happier, there is a growing mound of evidence that suggests that that is not actually the case. According to work done by the British Psychological Association, having children dramatically increases unhappiness. People delude themselves into thinking that feelings of unhappiness will not crop up when they have kids, but that is simply not the case. Having a child is a stressful event that places parents in a tough position, and it leads to feelings of unhappiness. And here is a very simple post from the, un, uh, the Regretful Parents subreddit. It's called, Kids, the Biggest Lie in Life. And the flair on this is venting, no advice. They will give you joy, quote unquote, for five minutes a day. After that, crying and crying and crying. They get sick, they don't wanna eat, they throw tantrums, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the whole post. And I'm sure probably all parents feel like that at moments, but the point of this article is to say that this is maybe not more often the case, maybe it is more often the case, but the happiness that we are told will come from having kids of our own because it's different when it's yours is a lie. Number five, sleep. Ah, uh, sleep. That's one of the great things about having dogs instead of children, I have to say, because for example, I woke up this morning, it's Sunday, I woke up at five o'clock in the morning because I had gone to bed early and I had slept all night and my two dogs, Kubi and Mo, sleep in the bed with me and they sleep peacefully and quietly and they don't wake up. And I woke up at five and I looked at my phone for a little while and I thought about getting up um, and doing my morning meditation thing really early for a Sunday. And then I was like, nah, I think I'll just doze off for a little while longer. And I actually fell back to sleep for like two more hours. And the dogs slept peacefully by my side the whole time. And then when I finally decided to get up later on, it was probably 830 by that time, the dogs just get up, shake themselves off, and we go about our day. No fuss. And that's just the way I like it. Well, that's just the way all of us child-free people like it, actually. So number five reason is sleep. 
as if being stressed out and unhappy having kids, not getting enough sleep is the number one shitty thing about breeding. And here is proof, once again from the Regretful Parents subreddit. This post is called Getting Tired of Survival Mode. And the flair on this is venting, but advice is welcome. And this person says, I am a pretty resilient person, but after a number of years with kids, I am starting to get tired of this lifestyle where I am constantly finding time slots for myself to really enjoy life. Every day I enjoy the minutes I am awake before they wake up. I am tired when I go to bed, so I fall asleep quickly. I fight my sleep though, because my free time is gone once I fall asleep. It would be fine if this happens every now and then, but dealing with this every single day, all caps, every single day of my life for who knows how many more years, it really makes me depressed. I wish I could go back and don't have kids. This is not their fault, so I will be the best parent they can get, but I am starting to give up when it comes to finding joy. I mean, come on, can you even believe this? I am starting to give up when it comes to finding joy. Like I said, I am resilient and I can keep going for them. I am just losing faith on if I will ever be happy around them. To the younger, single, childless me, I loved having so many hobbies and doing what I wanted. Those were very good times and I am very thankful for them. Planning on looking for a therapist in the next few weeks, I do want to find joy in this lifestyle and unfortunately, it seems impossible on my own. Kudos to them for looking for a therapist. Personally, I think everybody in the world would benefit from therapy. Um, but how sad is that? I mean, you wish, well, I wish because I'm fascinated by why people do what they do, but I wish I could interview this person and, and find out why did you have kids and are you married or, and are you a, a single parent and what made you want to have more than one kid? You know, it's really, really sad. And it almost makes me feel guilty about how self-centered I get to be, how self-centered child-free people get to be, but me, since I'm thinking of myself sleeping all I want, um, it almost makes me feel guilty. Almost. Okay. Reason number six, why people choose not to have kids. Poor eating and health habits. I found this kind of fascinating. So this is from the original article on the We Have Kids blog. Much like poor sleep quality, poor eating habits and poor health increases when raising a child. Let me say that again. Poor eating habits and poor health increase when raising a child. It is all too easy to fall into the trap of eating processed food that damages one's health and not getting enough exercise and outdoor time. You know, you would think that having a kid would make you hyper-focused on eating healthy and getting enough exercise and getting outside because you would want to teach your kid that. But unfortunately that is not the case. Um, I had a roommate recently who has a couple of older kids and then she has a little three-year-old. And unfortunately he's an iPad kid. He wakes up, she hands him his little kid's iPad that plays obnoxious cartoons and songs and stuff for him. And he walks around with that thing in his hand all day eating garbage after garbage, after fast food, after popcorn, after hot dogs, after, you know, she took him 
I lived with her this past summer and I think she took him to the pool two or three times, the pool that was in the community where they lived. But other than that, you know, he didn't even use the backyard. My dogs use the backyard. I saw that kid in the backyard once or twice. And that is just sad. And yeah, she eats crap and she's a fat ass. So anyway, uh, seeing as your free time is severely restricted when you are raising a child, it can be difficult to live a healthy lifestyle. Mm, but is it really? If you have those habits, kids learn from their parents. You know, you don't see obese kids running around with super healthy workout type parents or vice versa. I mean, maybe you do one in a, in a very rare case, but for the most part, kids take after their parents. In fact, many non-parents report they live healthier lifestyles than parents do. And then these folks are teaching their kids to eat garbage and lay in front of the screen. And in the U.S., as we probably all know by now, the rate of childhood obesity has tripled since the 1970s. For us Gen Xers, you know, we were probably the last generation of kids where it was rare to see a fat kid. There was usually one or two in every class, but um, very rare. And as I've mentioned many times on this channel, you know, I struggled with uh, sugar addiction and, and et cetera, et cetera. I won't get into it now, but I grew up, you know, kind of on the chunky side, not really, but just kind of a little bit chunky. And I was picked on for that. And looking back at pictures of myself, I was just like so normal looking. Anyway. As of 2023, one in five children in the U.S. are obese. Not overweight, obese. With this number rising yearly. And I don't want to make this like an anti-fat acceptance post. This is supposed to be a child-free post, but it kind of crosses over. But that's 20% of the kids in the United States that are obese. And why are they like that? because of processed food and fast food. That's why. Snacks, processed crap. It's not because they're sitting down to dinner every night eating meat and vegetables and a little bit of carbs. It's not, it's not that. That 20% of kids being obese, that was unheard of 40 years ago. That was like, that was like a, you couldn't even imagine that being the case. Anyway, so we'll leave that conversation to another video, but the solution to the problem is don't have kids. Number seven. Okay, so this particular article listed the overpopulation of the planet as reason number seven why people don't have children, but I feel like you could kind of include that in the ecological impact reason. So I'm going to list the, the seventh reason on this list as fuck pregnancy and childbirth. Not worth the price. And here's some proof. And this is from, of course, the Regretful Parents subreddit. And this post is called, Giving Birth Wrecked My Health. The Flare Venting. Advice Welcome. Uh, during pregnancy, I threw up until I gave birth. I had a week-long induction, which ended in an emergency C-section and blood transfusion, followed by developing bowel complications. I was a pretty average health before I got pregnant. I am 28 at the time of writing this post. At six weeks pregnant, I developed non-stop vomiting. I went to the ER because I fainted. I couldn't keep water down, and I was diagnosed with hyperemesis gravidarum, which is a super rare 
condition that the doctor in the ER was like, you have food poisoning. I said, I haven't eaten meat in three days. She said, okay, then it's this really rare complication. You will need anti-sickness tablets. I had this condition until 38 weeks. I was on three different meds throughout my pregnancy, three ER trips in total from fainting. At one point I went gray and actually hit my head on the toilet, knocking myself out. And my husband found me collapsed in a heap on the floor, this poor woman. I was told I had gestational diabetes at 28 weeks and I was tested until the birth for it. Midwives and doctors couldn't decide if I had it or not. My blood sugar was spiking and then dropping. My monitor was inconsistent and my son was very large. He was measuring in excess of the 100th percentile in size. The sonographer looked at his measurements at 36 weeks and said, that's not right. I need to recalculate these. And then she said, take this paperwork, go speak to a doctor around the corner. You may need a C-section. Shocking. I went with my husband and the consultant asked me how I felt about a C-section. And I said, yeah, I'd love to just get it over with that way without induction. And she said, okay, let's go with the induction. I was confused to say the least. I was just asked how I wanted to proceed and then immediately told I can't do it like that. Anyway, I had an induction and it was awful. It worked. I got to 10 centimeters. For anyone who doesn't know what she's talking about, she's talking about her cervix dilating to 10 centimeters, which is how dilated the cervix has to be in order to start pushing the baby out. I got to 10 centimeters, but I have scoliosis and my twisted spine and out of line hips meant he couldn't descend into my pelvis and got stuck. It turns out I can't have kids naturally and need intervention. So whisked into the operating theater, had him stayed in the hospital four nights. Won't go into depth about that. It wasn't great. I'm in therapy for my whole pregnancy, labor, etc. Do not recommend at all. And of course she has to say this, of course, because they all say this. But I love my son more than life. They all have to qualify with that because otherwise you're a bad mom. I love my son more than life itself, but holy mother of God, that was horrible. If anyone actually wants to know what birth feels like, I can let you know. It feels like someone has a bunch of knives and is trying to dig out of your lower stomach and then chainsaw you in half. I was begging for death, to be frank with you. Hope that's okay to put here. A bit dark, but that is the reality of childbirth. After the C-section, my surgeon came in to see me. She's in Great Britain, so it's the NHS. He said he double folded my bowel and he is sorry if I develop any complications. And then he left the room. This is in the 21st century, folks. Since my C-section, C-section, eight and a half months later, I'm bleeding from my GI tract and I need a camera, meaning I think the scope. I have the symptoms of Crohn's or ulcerative colitis or worse. I have CPTSD from the birth and arthritis, all new since childbirth. My regret is just wrecking my body and mind. And that's just one woman's story. And it's not all that uncommon. Here's another one. This post is called, I deeply regret having children and I hate them more than anything. And props to this woman for being blunt and honest. I, 26 year old female, am a mother of two children, a male four and a female two. 
Although I never really hated the thought of having kids in my life, I never actually wanted to have them. Like, I really said, yes, I want kids now. I'm married to my husband, male, 28, for six years now. So they got married when she was 20, which in this day and age is way too young, in my humble opinion. I'm married to my husband for six years now, and I can't even leave him, although he's the reason I feel like this. I don't try to make this all my kids' fault. It's not their fault. We brought them into this world, and it's mostly my horrible decision to let my husband convince me that motherhood is beautiful and great. However, I can't deny that I hate them more than anything in this world. She's talking about her kids. I hate them more than anything in this world. It was him, her husband, who really wanted to have them. And after he desperately asked almost every day to try for a baby, I gave in. I mean, uh, this is why... <laughs> All right, so I'm 53. I am past menopause. I'm thrilled to say I cannot get pregnant anymore. So what the hell do I care, right? Part of the reason I make this content is just in the hopes that maybe one young woman <laughs> will see these posts and just think, just think about what you're actually doing, what you're giving up, what you're signing up for, what you're in for when you decide to have kids. Because this is, this is, uh, this is too much. It was him who really wanted to have kids. And after he desperately asked almost every day to try for a baby, I gave in. So this person wasn't interested in having kids, but she didn't really think about it. She just let her partner push her into it, even though she's the one that has to do everything. All he has to do is bust a nut. She's pregnant and she's, it's all on her. From there, which is a really bad design, but you know, I can't argue with nature. Um, I got pregnant with our son first. It was a hard birth, 41 hours of labor. That's almost two straight days. And I ended up having a C-section. The scar is ugly, fat, and very visible because it healed even worse than expected. Our daughter was a natural birth, 16 hours of labor. Not so bad, right? Right? But my vagina ripped up to my clitoris, which made me numb to any touch down there. I can't feel anything. I can't feel anything when I'm getting into intimate moments with my husband, and I hate my body so much. I have stretch marks everywhere. Sports didn't help getting my pre-pregnancy shape back, and I just feel like a piece of shit when I look in the mirror. Even worse is my mental state. My husband works all day. I decided to be a stay-at-home mom when we had our daughter, and I'm overwhelmed by all of this. I struggle with depression every day. I have to keep the kids busy, do all the work at home, and have no support when my husband gets home because he's so tired. He promised me to help raise our children with me, but I ended up in a love and almost sexless marriage with two children I hate so much, overwhelmed by the amount of work I have to do, and I see no way out of this. I feel like I can't do this more than a year, and I'm seriously afraid I will unalive myself. 
I mean, if that doesn't stop you in your tracks and make you think twice. <laughs> and yes, for any breeders out there who like to hate watch this kind of content, yes, I understand many people really want children and are willing to make any sacrifice to have them. Yes, us child-free people do understand that. All we're saying is fucking think before you act. Okay, number eight, logistics. Here's from the original article from the We Have Kids blog. The logistics of two parents raising a child can be difficult to navigate. With the costs of childcare factored in and the growing need for both parents to work full time, it puts even more stress on the parents to find a way to make everything work. This gets even more difficult if it is a single parent raising a child. Being a single parent sucks balls, okay? I mean, the world must know this by now. I don't know, I don't know why anyone would do it. I mean, my mother had me and then got knocked up with my twin brothers who are not my fathers. And so my father divorced her. And then she was essentially a single mom with three little kids and three little kids under the age of five. And it was one of the, the most miserable times in her life. And she ended up married to an abusive narcissist, my stepfather, who she's still married to 42 or three years later, because he knows how to make a dollar. So being a single parent sucks balls is the moral of that story. Anyway, Excluding people who were married when they had kids, but then something happened and they ended up the primary custodial parent or otherwise raising their kids alone. I just wonder what percentage of, what percentage of people end up as single parents simply because of failed birth control or a lack of birth control or guilt and fear, uh, religious or not, around terminating an unwanted pregnancy. I wonder if it's most, you know? Like, all of the, the young girls who get pregnant in high school, how many of them are doing it on purpose, with the, with the purpose of, I want to have a baby? Probably not most. So most people who are single parents, and I have a guy friend who had sole custody of his daughter from the time she was two years old. So it's not just single moms, but most people who are single parents are just parents because they don't believe in abortion or they got lazy as my male friend did about using condoms. Just think, just really think for a single moment about the vast, about the sheer amount of human misery and struggle and suffering and poverty and loss of human potential that could all be prevented by the humble condom. Condoms, kids, condoms are your best friend. If you want to main, con maintain control of your life and your sexual health, condoms, buy them, use them. And that's all I have to say about that right now. Number nine on the list of the top 10 reasons why people choose not to have children, passing down mental and physical health issues. And this one, um, I, I am glad this is sort of becoming more, more common to hear people say things like this, like, well, such and such runs in my family and it's usually, you know, major depressive disorder or bipolar or, or schizophrenia or whatever. And I don't want to subject my children to that. Or as I like to say, I would never subject any child of mine 
to me. I uh, struggle with CPTSD from my own childhood, which I have mentioned uh, before on this channel. This causes me um, bouts of intense rage and dysregulation in my brain. I come from a long line of depressed alcoholics, and I personally have spent my lifetime, my entire adult life, struggling with a seemingly endless selection of addictions. So why, why would I possibly think that it's a great idea to pass down my genes? Obviously, it's much easier for me to say that because I never wanted kids. I had to help raise my three younger brothers and I lost much of my own childhood to doing that and being given way more responsibility than a young kid should have. And um, I probably would have been someone who didn't want kids anyway, even if that hadn't happened. And so it's easy for me to say, no, I'm, I don't want to have kids. I don't want to ha have to make them suffer as I have, you know, or worse than I have. Consider the people you know whose health habits and family tree are just a fucking hot mess. Because everybody knows people like that nowadays. And they breed just because it's normal. Just because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to have kids. All the child-free movement is asking of the human race is that if at all, all possible. Please stop and think what you're doing before you decide to bring children into the world. And finally, the tenth reason why people choose not to have kids. Marital issues. Or, you could say, relationship issues caused by having to deal with fucking brats. Research has shown that parenthood tends to have a negative impact on marriage due to the restrictions and stresses that come with raising a child. And this is, once again, from the original article on the We Have Kids blog. This negative impact can lead to other fissures in the marriage, and the more children in a family... Sorry. And the more children in the family correlated with lower parental satisfaction, according to a meta-analysis from the Journal of Marriage and Family. And I am just taking a wild guess that the more kids you have, the more work it is, the less attention you're able to give each child individually. So you just end up parentifying the older kids, as happened to me, to, to be little parents to your younger kids. And it's just a giant fucking mess. And you don't have time to have a relationship with your spouse, especially nowadays, if you're both working full time or more, if you are really and truly in love with your partner, and this is my words now, not the original article, I can't imagine why you would want to put a screaming baby and all the work and mess and exhaustion that comes with it between the two of you. And yes, I'm not a, uh, an idiot or an unnatural woman, okay? Even as a girl who's never, ever, ever wanted to have kids, I still know and understand that primal feeling that you get when you really have lust and love and are drawn to a man, that feeling of your body, your body just like screaming, I want to have his baby. I know that feeling. I've had that feeling. Obviously, we needed that feeling for survival of the species in prehistoric times. And that's a nice feeling. It feels good to, to feel that way about a guy. But you don't have to act on it. Remember that I have looked at these reasons from a child-free perspective. But really, why would you want to do that? If you love your partner, love your partner. Enjoy loving each other. You don't need to bring kids into it. And finally, at the end of this article, it's kind of fascinating that there is like a random list of questions and answers. Uh, presumably, the answers are from the author of the article. Uh, the first question is really stupid, but I found the answer 
to be almost profound and touching. And so I just wanted to close with this. So the question was, are two children expensive for parents? <laughs> but the answer, one child itself is extremely expensive for the earth. On top of that, not only is the earth paying the debts that humanity accumulated over centuries, children will be paying for the interests accrued over generations in the form of war, riots, conflict, food supply, water shortage, unbreathable air, etc. So think, think about the children who will inhabit a world trashed with plastics. And that's all I have for you today, folks. <laughs> if you made it this far, I love you so much. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate all the support I've been getting. This channel was um, an idea that was rattling around in my brain for several years, and I am really glad that I saw it through and have been able to um, make some content that a few people seem to like. So um, thanks for stopping by. Please do like, comment, subscribe. I so appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.